How does it feel to be the most promising founder of the year when you're in your 20s? Today we meet Pankras Karema, the founder and CEO of Expedition Masai Safaris, a tour company that has been in existence for the last seven years. From Samburu National Reserve, this is Founders Connect Africa. Let's go. Hey, good morning, Mr. Frank. Hi, good morning. How are you? Fine, fine. How are you? Very well. Yes. I'm so excited to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, Karibu sana. This uh, is uh, Sarova Shama. Uh -huh. yeah, hope, um, uh, you had a wonderful night. Yes, yes, I had a great night. Uh -huh. uh, Sante sana so, for hosting us. Are you, are you prepared for the game drive? Yes, I am. To discover more what the yes. has to offer. Yes, yes, yes. So, so let's, let's go see. This. Okay, okay. I've never been to Samburu before. It's so beautiful. I like the mountains. Uh -huh. The mountains view. Uh -huh. Yeah, Samburu is a hidden uh, gem. Yeah. It's and a gem. it's a hidden gem, and you get that uh, so many people they don't know about it. Yeah. But uh, it's a, a place which is uh, coming up very well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many times have you been here before? I've been here several times. And Samburu is one of my favorite destinations in the country. Wow, your favorite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so over there we have uh, Mount uh, Ndoto Mountain. It's a beautiful place. And you can do a hike, by the way. At the, man, at the mountain? Yes, yeah. when you're staying here. Yeah. That mountain is hikeable. Okay. okay. You can uh, organize for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you come here, you go and do a hike. Let's do a hike. Up to the summit. Samburu Simba. Wow, so you have brought me to the bush completely. <laughs> Are you sure we're not going to get anything here? Uh, <laughs> it's part of nature, it's just in case. Uh, uh -huh. Be observant. Mm. I cannot guarantee that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We are in the wild. We're in the wild. Yeah. Anything can happen. Anything can happen, so be prepared. <laughs> yeah. Let's say, what's tourism, something that you loved since you were a young person? How did you begin Expedition Masai Safaris? Expeditions started way back in high school. The interest of traveling, discovering new places, you know, yeah. and getting to, to adventure and killing that, uh, achieving that curiosity of uh, what there, what is there, what is hidden there. When I get there, what will I see? What can I discover beyond that point? So you get that is something that is within, is passion. Yeah. And that's why I keep telling people that uh, whatever I do today is not I, it's not a job. I'm just a man who is uh, achieving his own passion. Yes. Going <laughs> yeah. with your own passion. Yeah, going with my own passion. Yeah. But now you get, because of training in the university, as um, I told you, uh, I did tourism. Yeah. And because of that, you get that now it polishes the passion that you have. Which was the first day that you made money and you were like, oh, <laughs> Kumbe here, there is something. <laughs> uh, I cannot say that there was a day that came that you make money just like that. Yeah. You get that it is it's, it's a journey, it's continuation. Mm -hmm. You get that people come, like the way I was telling you, you start with a zero client, mm -hmm. zero customer, and then with the time they keep bringing each other. Yeah. And then until that time that corporates, they started accepting what you are doing. So that I can say it was a big break, that is in 2016. After winning the summer, yeah. it was the big break because we got the social first. Media awards, uh, yes. Social media awards. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. After winning summer, mm -hmm. we, we started getting a, a accepted by the corporate. Mm -hmm. So I can say the big break was when we handled our first corporate, okay. and they were paying so much money yeah. in terms of uh, even if the profit was not that huge, yeah. but uh, in terms of revenue, in terms of uh, handling money, I can say that is when we handled a lot of money. Yeah. In terms of an skill. Think around uh, five million plus yeah. business. For one, 
customer. Yes. <laughs> I think I should join this business. <laughs> uh-huh. So it was a good one. It yeah. was it, it was a good um, business. Yeah. And in terms of even uh, like uh, you know, uh, so I can be able to do this because yeah. if uh, somebody can trust you to and gives you five million in advance so that you yeah. can be able uh, to organize everything. Yeah. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Someone has believed in your brand. Exactly. Yeah. And now you start even taking things more serious mm. in life. And uh, yeah, you have been... Okay. Yeah. You did tell us exactly um, uh. the journey from now being in campus uh-huh. and, and transitioning. Did you get employed uh-huh. before you started? Uh-huh. Just that journey of how now you transitioned to um, even calling it expedition on yeah. Oh, you uh, in campus? You get that we are just doing like the way you can go out with your friend. Yes. We know, uh, I never thought that it can be something serious. Yeah. So we used to go out like uh, the way uh, I, uh, you can just carpool with your friends and take them somewhere. Yeah. But because you have something unique, yeah. you have passion in what you are doing, so you do it very well mm. until your friend next time they are just telling you to organize another one. And there was no way that you agree that you are the one who is organizing. organizing. But because you do it so passionately, yeah. and everything that you are doing with them, you make sure that everything goes on well and perfect. Yeah. So you execute a plan very well, and you get that even your fl- friends start trusting what you are doing. So that was my case with me. Yeah. So my friends started, uh, started trusting on what I was telling them, yeah. that uh, we can go somewhere and carpool, do some uh, little fundraising here and there. Somebody pays like uh, 200, 300. Yeah and uh, you go for a weekend you go out there i take good photos yeah. you come back so when you come back to the university you uh, i used to get that people used to get excited like uh, they would like to join the next mm. they would like to join the next they would like to join the next so that's how we 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 we, we, we have uh, come where we are today oh, and with that you get now now that uh, sometimes you could go for a safari with your friends and sometimes uh, you get that there is no person that you know so the, actually these are not your friends, mm. they are friends of friends. So and then you find yourself that uh, there is not even anything to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so by the end of the day, you, you is like you have, t- I have t- you have taken people for a safari. That's, yeah. That was my case. I used to take people for a safari, yeah. but without pay. Without pay? Without pay. Hey. But I did not know that. How long uh, did you take? I think uh, like uh, from first year, second year in the university, up to around third year. So you said making money in third year? Yeah, from there is when now we, we started thinking that uh, uh, instead of doing this and you know, you, you get in so many responsibilities yeah. eh? and making sure that people are back home safe when they are going, like you have negotiated uh, with these Makangas, the best deal that you can get. Because you used to use Matatus yes. for these journeys. Yeah. There were no tour buses at that time that yeah. we could afford mm-hmm. to, uh, to use to go for a safari. We used to, to go and negotiate with a Makanga in town. You get a Matatu, come near the university. The day for a safari, these go organize the students from even other campuses. Uh, they used to come to the main campus. So uh, let's get to Amaratu. You go for a safari and then come back in the evening. So it used to be hectic, as you know, dealing with um, uh, Matatu and uh, some, uh, you know, is informal. For them, it's like informal sector. Yes. And uh, for what you are doing, is uh, this is tourism. Eh? So for it was not marrying. The two of them, so it, uh, they could we could get to a place, and then the jama for Matatu could say apana. You know what we had agreed. Is not. Uh, see, he we wanna figure to nafika hapa, and then I when you are at, and then I go. But that was not the argument. Uh, yeah. That was not the the, the agreement. Yeah. The agreement was like we, we go and come back, yeah. but because we nadi wana taka pesa zaidi, yeah. you get somewhere and then nasa ma apana. We wanna fuck we figure hapa, and then it By the way, there was a scenario like uh, uh, once. Eh? In Kuru National Park, there was a time that we had gone with my friends, the, cam- the yeah. campus mates, yeah. my colleagues. And then when we got at the gate, the Jamaaf uh, Matatu akafika, akatufisha kwa gate. And then I matufisha kwa gate and then nikaona mefunga gari. And then he wanted to go back. So I said, where are you going? I said, yeah. no, my agreement is going to be up and then me, I go back. Ni mwingie kwa National Park and then mkimaliza you call me. <laughs> you know it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Because you get that uh, this person is not even aware of what happened. Yeah. Like uh, are you, you informed that you cannot car. yeah you cannot just walk into walk. National yes, Park. Yes. So you start uh, negotiating again with him. Apana apana you ask you know no. If I'm getting in now there is another different package for that. Mm. So it becomes it it used to be very hectic. 
And of course, with the time you get that, uh, you don't want to continue doing this. You look for professionals, you yeah. look for people who can be able to do the to handle tourists. Yeah. Because if, no matter how small it was, you know, I mean, no matter how small it is, it's yeah. tourism. And you know there is a way that you handle tourists and there is a way you handle other people. Yeah. So you get, it used to get hard. And then you start now move, moving away from that, getting to uh, something which is more established. Yeah. So you get a good uh, tourist okay. vehicle. Yeah. So that you at least when you take people, they will not be disappointed next time. So you uh, have never been employed before? No, I have not been employed. I did not see it coming. Yeah. So, it was a joke. Yeah, it's like a joke. So today you are negotiating, yeah. tomorrow you are doing the same. And then you go back to the university, guys are telling you now, everything yeah. was okay. Yeah. So from that, uh, I, I, you, you, you get that even after finishing the, the university, you don't need to go and look for something else to do. Yeah. Because already you have something that you are doing. Yeah, you so you just continue doing some, that, but out of the university. Yeah. So you just, we, we just got out of, from the university and got like a small office. You, you had a team, I mean, you had one partner? Oh, only one partner at that okay. time, our MD right now. Yes. yes. Yeah. And then we moved from the university and from using university resources, those are computers and everything, and internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. got out and got like a small place in town and uh, a small office. Yeah. And then we started Kidogo. Kidogo. Uh, now with that small office, we are able now to push the dream. And uh, because clientels, clientels, clients were already there. Yes. So you get that when we got that office, we could only now scale up what yeah. we were doing then. And uh, because of delivering what you promised, mm. well, now the business kept growing. Kept growing. Yes. Now you have been going with tours uh -huh. with campus people. Uh -huh. How did you now scale up now to do it professionally? You're even getting um, tourists from outside the country. Uh -huh. I'm coming and looking for you. How did you scale up? Mm, I can see that uh, when you give when you give value, or when you, you meet the, 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 the your the clients' needs. need, yeah. you get that these clients will always become your brand ambassador. That's how you are able to grow because you get that when we we, we promise something, or if you tell a person that uh, when you pay this amount of money, we'll be able to take you to Masai Mara, yeah. or we'll be able to take you to Sambul yeah. and bring back to Nairobi, yeah. and you honor that. You get that. Uh, Customers, when they go out there, they get happy, they come back with their friends or their family members. So because of that, we, we, we got so many referrals. And even today, our main marketers are our customers. Because when they get out there, they get excited. When they come back, they come and refer us to their, their, their friends and their family members. So because of that, we were able to grow. And of course, when you are growing, you need a team. You establish a right team. Because with the right team, you will not be overwhelmed by things. Because sometimes, you know, you might be having so much. Like you are only two, or two people in the office, you know. Mm. So you have so many customers, you have so many inquiries. So you might not be able to handle them. So that you can be able to scale up, you need a, a good team. So we invested, we invested in a good team. And then after investing in a good team, which will be able to deliver and with a lot of training, so you'll be able to move kido, kido, to where you, are, you want to, to be. Yes. So it's been about seven years? Yeah, it's about seven years what now. What has been the best about um, your company that you you remember? I remember now the, the first one, uh -huh. you getting the first award. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, won so many awards. Yeah. And you know, every day that we win an award, eh, it is a vote of confidence from our customers, yeah. of telling you that whatever you are doing is good and keep up. Yeah. Yeah, so winning awards and uh, keeping winning them, yeah. I think is something that uh, we don't take for granted. Yeah. And you get that the main voters of these our, of these awards that we our customers, yeah. So it's something that we don't take for granted. Yeah. Yes. Your favorite uh, time uh -huh. or your favorite moment uh -huh. um, during the journey? Uh, 2018, we 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 managed to win uh, company of the year in the country, yeah. and uh, that is the SME, yes. the leading SME in the country. Yeah. I think that was the best. That was your favorite. Time? Yeah, that was my favorite time, uh -huh. winning the leading SME in the country. The leading SME. Yeah, yeah, in Kenya. Big name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, a while ago, you won the founder, um, the most promising mm, yes. founder of the year. Yeah. At the founder of the awards. Mm, just uh, 2020. Yes. And uh, you get that uh, this year has been having so much in terms of uh, the business wise. You know, uh, I lost my dad, unfortunately. And may he rest in peace. 
So this year has been so bad for me and very tough. And then you get on top of it, there is something that uh, came up that that is uh, get, uh, winning the uh, 2020 founder of the year East Africa. Yeah. I think uh, it, 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 it is good yeah. and it feels like apart from whatever is happening, the world is watching. Yeah, the world is watching what you are doing. Yeah. Yes. And sky is the limit. How did you um, deal with competition? Uh, you get that, um, comp how, how you deal with competition, of course, one is being unique with what you offer and uh, marketing. And of course, uh, getting your customers what, what they need. You know, listening to your customers' need so that whatever you are delivering to them, there is nobody who can be able to deliver. Or even if there is somebody else who can be able to deliver, but there is nobody who can be able to deliver the way you, you package your product. Um, throughout your journey, mm -hmm. what was some of the mistakes you made that you look back and say, if I knew I would have changed this, or if someone is planning to enter this, they should be careful of doing this? Uh, like not starting immediately. I, I feel like I would have started immediately that uh, I, I got to the university, like when I was exactly 20 or 18, I was <laughs> supposed to start then. <laughs> Maybe we could be far, <laughs> more than where we are right now. How, how, how old did you start? How old were you when you were starting? I think uh, 23, <laughs> yeah, around 23 years. you started when you were 20? Yeah, or 18. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that is something that I feel like uh, if given that opportunity back, yeah. I would start, you start immediately. You don't buy by time, mm. yeah, mm. Okay. because there are so much that you, you learn. You when need you to learn. Yeah, yeah, when you are there. Yeah, yeah. There are people who say that you need to. I think probably our parents. Uh -huh. Um, they ask you, you know, go get employed, go get the feel of employment, uh -huh. and then you come out. No, no, you start doing that. Uh -huh. Is it something that you'd advise young people who definitely have an, a product uh -huh. and probably in campus and uh -huh. want to start? Uh, you know, it depends with the person, eh? yeah. because sometimes when you, if you want to venture into business, there are so many opportunities that not necessarily tourism mm. or not necessarily the other. There are so many things that you can do. And you look at people, they have uh, different ideas, uh, different uh, approach of things. So it depends with uh, a person because somebody like me, I was not employed and we are doing well. And of course, we are continuing doing well. So it's not a, not a necessity that you get employed so that you can be able to learn the tricks. Sometimes you can learn on your own, yes. And you put a lot of effort because there, everything is available, materials you can research online. Because now when you have not been employed, now you need to do a lot of research. Yeah, yeah everything that you are doing. Because, you it's, it. yeah, because it's first-hand experience. Yeah. Yeah. So you learn so much. And every moment you take it serious, yeah. yes. Mm. But the it's lessons, not easy. The lessons you've learned mm. in the years about entrepreneurship? Um, you have to respect your customers because that is the king of your Biashar. The customer is the key. So you have to respect your customers. My customers' money you have to respect because sometimes they might tempt you. You know, there are some people who will get money and uh, you go misuse. And then <laughs> when customers, they, <laughs> they, they want to travel, you don't have money. Have yeah, so you have to respect your clients and their money. And of course, you have to honor the, your end of bargain. If I tell you that I'm taking you to a five-star hotel, there is no two way about it. I'll, I, I'll deliver that. So you, you must honor the end of the bargain. Yes, what you promise, you deliver. Yes, and of course, customers are going to reward you because of that. Yeah, but if you start cutting deals, like I promise you a five-star and then you get two-star or something and stories, you know, of course, they are going to run away from me. Okay. Yes. Um, who do you look up to in the entrepreneurship world? Uh, in Kenya. <laughs> we can start with international, then uh -huh. come, come back. Uh, to Kenya. Richard Branson. Yeah. He is doing very well in our sector. Yeah. So that is a person that uh, I look uh, at and say, oh, the guy is doing very well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In he, Kenya. In Kenya, we have so many. <laughs> uh -huh. There are so many young men, and uh, of course, there is um, James Mwang from Equity. Yes. He, are, he have managed to turn around Equity Bank. Yeah. And just a CBO, yeah. yeah, from uh, just a small microfinance, yes. and now he's a, a serious bank. Um, so, what's your favorite quote? Yeah, don't wait, do it now.
Do it now. Yes. Do it now. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, after this, uh -huh. where are we headed? After this, we are going to the Boma uh -huh. or the Samburu uh, villages yeah. so that we can be, uh, be able to get a touch of culture. See the culture. See yeah, the culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Samburu is very rich with uh, the culture. Yes. So after this, let's go there so that at least we can be able to see if we will be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I might be yeah, you might be lucky. Today. You go back with a Samburu. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to Samburu, guys. Hold That was interesting, some rural people, how they live. Yeah, yeah. You, you can yeah. see the area, the Morani, the women groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, now basically this is how the Samburu life is. Yeah. And you can see the lifestyle is a bit different from what you are used Very to. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I hope you are enjoying it. Eh? I am, I am, I am enjoying it. Yeah. So you you need to go and rest. Yes, yes. In the, hot, in the hotel there is a wonderful swimming pool. Yeah, go and, uh, I saw it. Yeah. I can't wait to dig in. Yeah, go and dig in and have some fun. Yeah. And love you tomorrow. Yes. Remember to call in a conversation yeah. by yeah. the riverside. Yeah. Awasonyiro will be doing a sundown. Yes. As we talk more about okay. expeditions Masai Safari. Thank you so much. Sawa sawa. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay. Oh, we're on the second day of our great journey to Samburu National Reserve. I'm hanging out definitely with Expedition Masai Safari CEO who's taken me on a great ride inside the Samburu National Reserve and we're here looking at what is going on. And one thing I have realized due to coronavirus, there are not so many tourists and we want to find out from him what has happened since coronavirus hit in March. Thank you so much. This has been a great ride for us. When we had the lockdown, we were much affected because you get that uh, our product is very sensitive. We cannot be able to take our product to the client or we cannot be able to sell our product online. The client have to visit where the product is. That is, you have to pay a visit to the National Reserve or a National Park so that you can be able to enjoy our product. So you get that uh, with the lockdown and cessation of movement, of course people are not able to travel. So you get so many hotels and uh, tour companies were affected. You get that uh, we were forced to close down completely. Yeah. All, uh, some hotels are not even operating right now. Yeah. You get that uh, some bookings that we had were cancelled completely and uh, other clients were, they rescheduled the booking. So you get that uh, with COVID we have been affected so much mm -hmm. and as you can see like uh, what you have seen in Samburu generally, yes. you can see that hotels are operating almost empty. Yes. Because and it's you, December. Yes, it's yeah. December. You get a time like this last year, yeah. we were operating at around 90% of how you are operating today, wow. which is around uh, 5 to 10% occupation rate, yes. which means that the industry is still much affected. Yeah. What have you done to stay afloat? Yeah, you get that uh, with the COVID. Uh, and uh, you get whereby that international flights like you, they were not coming and you get that uh, there are some countries where that uh, they are not allowing their people to come in the country. You get that our international market up now is dormant because you get that because of the regulation of, uh, for, because of the COVID and everything which is happening. You get that uh, many companies were affected like the companies which depend on the international market. So because of that, you get we some companies had to change how they operate and concentrate more on marketing domestic, domestically, yeah. so that we can uh, uh, campaign and have these uh, our, our fellow Kenyans travel. 
Uh, but uh, companies like us who have been concentrating in the domestic market, you get that, uh, of course, we are getting affected, but not as much as the companies that concentrate with purely Zoom. But uh, many companies had to change the scope. Yes. And you get even the companies that were uh, depending purely on uh, the Mzungus, yeah. they are of course coming to compete to uh, through this uh, domestic market, yeah. which is uh, promising. And you get that yeah. Kenyans are embracing Tembea Kenya. Uh, you get that uh, this gospel has been uh, there for quite some time. And right now the government is taking it very seriously. You, uh, the other day you, you saw KWS and uh, of course Magical Kenya. They are trying to push so hard uh, the domestic market, like uh, marketing so much, concentra uh, concentrating more effort, more resources into domestic market. Because if we can be able to have our people travel within, we might not even depend on Mzungus. Yeah, because we can be able to fill our hotels and we'll be able to create employment to our population and of course uh, keep our, our, our tour companies running. Thank you so much for your time. I've had so much fun and I've really enjoyed. Uh, let's go back to see whether we can get uh, a glimpse of um, other animals before it's too dark. Sawa sawa. It's Twenda. been real, guys. See you next time. Twenda Kazi. Yes, <laughs> <laughs>